Hi, my name is Dana Lampy, and I am the Iowa Future Business Leaders of America State Advisor. Thank you for agreeing to be an event coordinator for our state conference this year. This video is to give you some general information on the roles and responsibilities of an event coordinator. This year our conference is held in Coralville at the Marriott Hotel. When you arrive, please park in the parkade. There is a fee for the parking, but we will give you um, a parking pass uh, at the end of your event. To get this uh, parking pass, please come to headquarters or second floor Borlaug room. Please notice that there are two doors. The first door is for the judges and the second door is for the event facilitators or the event coordinators. We have two, two different types of events that you may be asked to help coordinate. The first type that I would like to talk about is the written test. If you are asked to be a written test coordinator, you do not need to come to the board log room or what we consider headquarters to check in. Instead, you will have a main event coordinator who is responsible for picking up all of the tests and making sure that all of the scantrons and all of the items get down to the ballroom. You will just need to check into the ballroom. You will be working with 10 to 15 other advisors or event facilitators or event coordinators like yourself um, to make sure that, this, that, uh, that the test goes smoothly. Your main responsibilities are one, to get the students in the room, two, to make sure that the students have the correct test, and three, once the students have started their test, to walk around the room and to make sure that they're not um, helping anyone else out, that they're not talking, and that they're just focusing on their own test. Again, when you arrive, you'll just go to the ballroom, try to get there um, maybe 15 minutes prior to the event. For written tests, they're actually closed while the written test is going on, and then we'll, it will open up for 15 minutes, and then it will close again. So please make sure that you get there just before, the, you know, right at the 15 minute mark, as soon as the, maybe the first test, um, be, be, excuse me, 15 minutes before the test begins, once that door opens up. Um, your main coordinator will have all of the tests around the room, and they'll ask you just to kind of man or uh, to, yeah, to man the test um, stacks. And what you'll have there with, let's say, accounting one, accounting two, accounting um, marketing, and all sorts of different tests, what there will be is a checklist of the student in that particular event. So, for example, I have banking and financial systems. I would be standing next to the banking and financial systems stack. As the students enter in, I would ask their name and check them off. I would hand them a copy of the test and a copy of the Scantron sheet because they will need to make sure that they fill out all of the answers on the Scantron sheet. Then the next student, check them off and go on. Now, if a student by chance is not on your sheet, go ahead, write their name down, make sure that they're taking that particular test, and we'll check later on in headquarters to see if that student has actually been signed up or not. We don't want to get into any arguments or any discussion. If that's the test that the student thought that they were supposed to do, we're going to go ahead and let them take that test. Once students are all checked in, your main coordinator will have a stopwatch and they will give the students one hour to complete their test. You'll notice that some students will finish the test in less than an hour and some students will use all the way up to the full hour. While the students are taking the test, we ask that you and the other event facilitators or event coordinators walk around the room and just make sure things are fine. There will be a pencil sharpener in that room um, if students need to. There are also uh, some of the tests you, they are allowed to use calculators and there is a list and a checkout table for calculators. If there's ever a problem down in uh, the ballroom for the, for the written tests, just make sure that you grab the phone there and call the Borlaug room. The other type of event that you may be asked to be an event coordinator for is a performance event. For performance events, please come to headquarters, which is Borlaug on the second floor. Again, there are two rooms. The first, or the, there are two doors. The first door is for the judges, and the second door is for the event coordinators. Your role as an event coordinator is kind of multiple. Your first responsibility is to stop at headquarters and to pick up your instructions, your guidelines, 
your rating sheets, stopwatch, note cards if necessary, case if necessary. You'll be received, you'll be given um, a packet and also given instructions by one of us that's in headquarters. After you get your packet, we ask that you go over to the judge's room, which is right next door, and um, take your judge and lead them to the room. Introduce yourself to the judge, get to know them, because during the event, you guys are going to be a team. In your packet, you will have some instructions on um, your event. There are a variety of different types of events. Some of them are just interview events. Some of them are just speaking events. Some of them have two parts, a case and then a performance. The sheet, we do our best to try to give you all the information that you need. Let's say you have impromptu speaking. Impromptu speaking is a two-part test. Number one, the students have a case, and then the second part is they come and perform. For their case, they will prepare in a separate room. So you might be an event facilitator or event coordinator for the prep room. In that case, you just make sure that you start the student on the time, you know, let's see. So let's say impromptu speaking, um, they receive, I believe, 10 minutes. So once you check the student in, let them into their room, start the, start the, the stopwatch, let the 10 minutes pass, knock on the door and let the students know that their time is up. After their preparation, they will go over to their preparation, they will go over to their presentation. At that time, another event coordinator will take over for that particular um, part of the event. If you are an event coordinator for a prep room, you are only responsible for the prep room and the students that come into the prep room. Once the students are done with their preparation, you'll hand them over to the presentation room. If you are an event coordinator for a presentation room, you're only responsible for the students in the presentation room. The um, prep room person will bring them over to you. Now, not all events have preparation. Some of the events, let's say community service, the students might bring in their computer, they might bring in a projector, they've got five minutes to sit up, and then they're going to do their presentation. Again, you as the event coordinator will make sure that you keep track of the time and not allow them to go over, let's see, community service project would be seven minutes, ten minutes, excuse me. You don't have to memorize it. It's all listed on the, on the, um, on the guidelines here for you. Um, now, if you ever have any questions, you're right down the hallway from headquarters, and we'll be right there to answer any questions if you need. If there are any problems, technical problems, um, those sorts of things, again, Please come into headquarters and we will take care of those things for you. As an event facilitator or an event coordinator for a performance event, you have a few extra responsibilities when working with the judges. And again, it's listed right on the sheet, but one thing I have to make sure that we make very, very clear is that when the judges have completed their rating sheets, the coordinator, you, need to recalculate the scores. We cannot allow for any ties. And then when you're finished, you need to fill out what we call the FBLA report form. And on this report form lists first, second, third, fourth, and fifth place winners. Please be complete in filling this out with first name, last name, and the schools. Um, we don't want to have any mistakes or any accidental um, goof ups because it's, you know, the students have worked very hard on these performances and on their preparation. So we want to make sure that we do our job correctly. Once again, the students, excuse me, when the judges complete their rating sheets, go through, recalculate. We cannot have any ties. We must have first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Fill out the event report form. When you are finished, bring all of the paperwork, everything back. The judges documents will go back to the judges room and then the, the documents or the, the, the package that you receive from headquarters will need to come back to headquarters room. Now, some of the events are open or what we consider open, which means that other people, other students, other advisors, other guests can come in and listen to those events. The event coordinator is responsible for making sure that no one comes in um, in the middle of a presentation, but once the presentation is over, they'll make sure that everyone who wants to come out of the room can come out and anyone who wants to come into the room can come in. 
Um, again, the event coordinator is the person who is responsible for making sure all that happens. Conference dress is extremely important. When students are competing, they must be in what we consider business attire. Um, let me go over that real quick. For ladies, it's a little bit harder to um, identify if the students are in the proper dress for the ladies than it is the gentlemen. So I'll go over the ladies here first and then we'll go over the gentlemen. For females, and in general, we ask all the students to be in some sort of a business suit. Now you will find that they're not all going to be in a business suit. Some of the ladies will be in different types of variations, and let me go through those. Things that are appropriate. Business suits with blouse, or business pantsuit with blouse, or skirt or dress slacks with blouse or sweater, or a business dress. Capris or gauchos with coordinating jacket and suit, and those gauchos must be worn below the knee, are also considered appropriate. We do ask that the ladies wear dress shoes. For the men, business suit with collar, shirt, and a necktie, or a sport quote, dress slacks, a collar shirt, and a necktie. A banded collar shirt may be worn if only a sport coat or a business suit is worn. And we also ask dress slacks, collar shirt, and a necktie is also appropriate. Dress shoes are, and socks are a must. Um, on the clarification on the women's, many women's two-piece suits are currently designed so that they do not require a blouse. Therefore, this will be accepted. In addition, slingback shoes, open toes, and sleeveless dresses are accepted. Professional attire is accepted or is actually required for all of our general sessions, um, all of the competitive events, any workshops that the students compete in. Now, you're thinking, dress code, I have to be in charge of making sure the students are in the proper attire. Yes, we do ask if you see someone that is completely not in the right attire that you definitely say something to them. Maybe step up and say, are you planning on competing? Yes. Is that what you're thinking about wearing? Yes. Does it meet uh, the criteria for business attire? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. And that might be something that you need to address with them. Now for performance events, it's pretty easy to do that because the student's going to check in with you if you are the event coordinator and uh, prior to the event and you'll have a chance to kind of take a look at their attire and either give them, yep, a nod or ooh, maybe they need to change. Written tests, it's a little bit more difficult because the kids are just kind of running into the room all at once. So we do ask that some of the event coordinators stay outside in the hallway or in the foyer, double check the students that are planning on coming in and making sure that they are in the proper attire. One of the most important things that I haven't mentioned in, in dress code is their name badge. Students must have their name badge with them at all times. Now, when they go into the performance itself, they can take off their name badge. But in order to check in to do the performance, they must have their name badge. If they're doing a written test, there's no need for them to take the name badge off. In addition to the students in, dress, in proper business attire, we do ask all of our judges, our advisors, and our event coordinators to also participate and wear business attire. So please take note of what you're planning on wearing either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Please make sure that it is also business attire. Thank you.